The ideal gas law combines all of the separate gas laws, Boyle's, Charles, Gay-Lussac, and allows you to solve for everything at once. It's a little different than the combined gas law because it now also includes finding and using the number of moles. We know that if we keep pressure and temperature the same and we increase the number of moles of a gas, then the volume will also increase. So the box on the left shows that volume is proportional to number of moles. In the middle, that box indicates that volume is proportional to the inverse of pressure. That, of course, is Boyle's Law. Volume and pressure are inversely related. Then we have volume being proportional to temperature. And that, again, is Charles' Law. As volume goes up, temperature goes up, temperature goes up, volume goes up. We now can combine all three of these into one relationship that says volume is proportional to number of moles times temperature over pressure. That gives us PV is proportional to number of moles times temperature. And finally, the ideal gas law, PV is equivalent to nRT, so number of moles times temperature times the R value. The R value is the ideal gas law constant. We will certainly discuss this more in class, and you will actually determine the gas law constant experimentally. The ideal gas law is a very powerful equation that allows you to solve for many variables as long as you know the others. Again, you do need to make sure that you can manipulate the equation for the different variables, and then it's simply a matter of plugging in the values. R, again, is the gas law constant. You will be provided with that value in the beginning, and then as you move through the problems and have more practice, you will be required to memorize the gas law constant. I will explain more in class, but the value is determined from several known values. We know that one mole of any gas at standard conditions of 273 Kelvin in one atmosphere will have a volume of 22.4 liters. That has been experimentally determined. Again, that value can be determined at any standard pressure one atmosphere, 760 millimeters of mercury, or 101.3 kilopascals. But the Kelvin temperature and the volume, 22.4 liters, will remain constant. If you take the ideal gas law, manipulate it to solve for R, you can plug in those constant values. One atmosphere, 22.4 liters for pressure and volume over one mole of any gas, at 273 Kelvin, put them in and you will come up with the ideal gas law constant. This one is in the units of liter atmosphere mole Kelvin, 0 0.0821 liter atmosphere mole Kelvin. This is the R value you must use in your problem when you are using pressure units of atmospheres. If you are using pressure units of kilopascals, then you will put in 101.3, 22.4, and again divide by 1 mole and 273 Kelvin. This gives you the R value in liter kilopascals mole Kelvin. So you simply pick the correct R value that matches the pressure units that you will be using in your problem. Let's work a gas law problem. We want to know how many moles of air there are in a 2 liter bottle at 19 degrees Celsius under 0 0.98 atmospheres of pressure. Looking at our data, we see that we have all the variables we need to plug into the ideal gas law except for the number of moles. Taking the equation, PV is equal to nRT, manipulating it for number of moles, meaning N is equal to PV over RT. Plugging in our values of pressure, 0.98 atmospheres times 2 liters, divided by the R value that we will choose is the 0.0821, since that will match our pressure unit of atmospheres, 
times 292 Kelvin, putting them into your calculator, gives you 0 0.082 moles of gas. If you knew the identity of that gas, you then could convert it to grams of that gas. Let's work another problem. What is the pressure exerted by 1.8 grams of hydrogen gas if it is in a 4.3 liter balloon at 27 degrees Celsius? Setting up our variables and looking for what we're trying to solve for. We're trying to solve for pressure. We first need to convert our grams of hydrogen into moles of hydrogen because the ideal gas law says moles, not grams, of gas. Once we get the moles of gas, we will put it into the ideal gas law manipulating for pressure. Pressure is NRT over V. Plugging in our number of moles, 0 0.9, our R value that corresponds to our pressure unit that we want to come up with. In this case, if we use 0.0821, our pressure unit will be atmospheres. 300 Kelvin, don't forget gas laws always have to be done in Kelvin, over our 4.3 liter volume gives us a pressure of 5.2 atmospheres. We have 1.4 grams of ammonia gas with a volume of 3.5 liters at a pressure of 1.68 atmospheres. Now we're going to solve for the temperature of this gas. Again, temperature is PV over NR. We still need to turn our grams of ammonia into moles using the molar mass of ammonia. Placing our variables in to T is equal to PV over NR. Again, this time we are going to use the still the 0.0821 liter atmosphere mole Kelvin because again our pressure unit is in atmospheres. Plugging our numbers in, we come up with a temperature of 873.4 Kelvin. Our temperature will automatically come out in Kelvin because that is the unit of temperature that is in our R value.